tickets, Miss Carlin. Bedroom 4B, you arrive in San Francisco at 8.30 tomorrow morning. Thank you, Chester. You deliver this to the Fairmount Hotel. At 12 noon tomorrow. That's what Mr. Seymour said. Uh, I've got to hurry, Miss Collins. If you want me to see you aboard. Oh, no, Cresco, that isn't necessary. Thank you very much for bringing me. Okay, enjoy yourself. Oh, I almost forgot. Mrs. Seymour wants you to get her a kimono in Chinatown. This is the address. It's paid for already. All you do is pick it up. When did she order it? Search me. See you Monday morning. Sharon! Sharon, my love. Keith! Ah, counted. Oh, Keith, you idiot. <laughs> Where have you been? I haven't seen you all month. I've been away, dear heart, but incommunicado. Come. Leave us go nibble on an ice cube, and I will my tail on Keith, I can't. My train leaves in just a minute. Ah, oh, something to ask you, Sharon. Something important. Tell me Monday. I'll get in touch with you as soon as I get back. Oh, you're in touch with me now. How did you know I was going out of town? Elementary, my dear lady. I drove over to your apartment, saw you get in the limousine, and I said to myself, Burgess, follow that limousine. <laughs> well, ah, here we are. You should have phoned me. <laughs> Where are you staying now? Ah, alas. I guess I'm known. Oh, Keith, you haven't been locked out again. What did you do this time? You promised me you'd stop drinking. I say many things, Bella. Well, what did you want to see me about? Maybe just to look at you. Are you in trouble? Do you need money again? Unfortunately, yes. No place to lower my head. This is all I can let you have right now. I'll pay it right back. Every penny. <laughs> I've got a writing deal next week. My thing. I know, I know. <laughs> oh, always my friend and me, dear lady. What could I do without you? Now, Keith, I really must go. Now, stay at my apartment while I'm gone. Oh, no, I won't violate your vestal hospitality. Lord! It's just for the weekend. Now, stay until Monday. You still have your key? Yep. Goodbye, Keith. That's 4B. That's right. Come in. Join the party. What do you want? Why are you in my compartment? Oh, that there must be some mistake. My name is Carlin. Sharon Carlin. I work for Mr. Milo Seymour in Los Angeles. I can show you my identity. Don't touch it. I just wanted to, to show you who I am, my identity. I... I'm not interested. But don't you see? I'm not who you think I am. A friend, Keith Burgess, just saw me. Oh, oh that's not mine. Oh, if it belongs to Mr. Seymour, I'm to deliver it in San Francisco. You're making a mistake. I don't make mistakes. I could call for help. You see this? This is a silencer. Try yelling just once. Porter man, would you like me to turn down your bed? Not now. Later. Yes, ma'am. When you need me, just ring. Thank you. Sit down. How did you get in here? Who is this? Why did you have to go and kill her? Okay now. 
Okay. Don't, please don't. Come on, come on. Oh. All right, lady, quit stalling. Oh, who are you? I'll ask the questions. All right, now, come on, pull out of it. You're in a jam. Who are you? My name is Brady. Police officer, Miss Carlin. How, how do you know my name? Your purse. Oh. You're in real trouble. Trouble? What kind of trouble? Murder. Murder? Oh, I didn't kill anyone. There were witnesses, plus a dead body. She, she's not here now. I thought you didn't kill anyone. Well, I didn't. I didn't, but... But, but the woman who was here... Her body's up front in the baggage car. This is all a mistake. The man. What happened to him? What man? The other man. He hit me with his gun. He was here, I tell you. He hit me. He took the envelope. You were drunk, Miss Carlin. You fell. That's how you passed out. Drunk? I never drink. No? You killed this, too. What, you didn't spill on yourself. I never saw that before. I, I never saw any of this. I don't drink, never! Oh. Who was the woman? You know who. Oh, no, I don't. I don't. Well, there was no identification on her. Why was she killed? She was stabbed through the heart. With a nail file. Your initials, Miss Carlin. It is yours, isn't it? All right, none of that. Come on, pull yourself together. Now listen, lady, we'll soon be pulling into Whitford. Oh, Whitford? That's right, I'm on the force there. No, no, Gee, no, no. Are you no, crazy no, or something? Don't or... say that. Well, look, we're pulling in. You better be sensible. Sensible? I'll make it as easy on you as I can. Now, you promise there won't be any trouble. I, I won't use the handcuffs. Nobody has to know why you're getting off the train. Just remember, it's for your own sake, not mine. I bagged my, my overnight case. It's up front with the body. We'll be taking off the train together. Go ahead. No tricks.
Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. With you. Oh, I can't stay here. I've got to get away. Please. Take me with you. Oh, take me with you, please. Okay, I'm going to Los Angeles and I am late. That's where I'm going. Oh, please take me with you. I've got to get home. Please. All right, get in. Oh, you're hurt. Of course he's hurt. You hit his head when you made me slam on my brakes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, you poor darling. I want my mommy. You'll be all right, Chris. You'll be all right. It's nothing. Oh, you, 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 you said you were late. Could we please go now? Oh, please hurry. It's nothing. Please. My name is Colbert, Paul Colbert, and this is my son, Chris. Hello. Hello, Chris. What's your name? Uh, Smith. Carol Smith. Your face is dirty. Oh. What's the matter, Miss Smith? I can't talk about it. Do you live in Los Angeles? You're a long way from home, aren't you? Um, I'd like to make a telephone call. I mean, the next place you come to, if you could stop for a minute. All right. Bankrupt me? Here. Thank you. Operator. Operator, I want to place a call person to person to Mr. Milo Seymour in Los Angeles. So interested, why don't Tell you me. Well, he was being nosy, uh, like a cop. But he saw we were respectable. Oh. Did you make your call? Yes, but nobody answered. All right, let's go. I'm late. Come on, let's go.
Bud, did you say your name is? Oh. Oh, yes, I remember. Smith. Huh? Miss Smith. Yes. What kind of trouble are you in, Miss Smith? Everything's just fine. I just want to get home to Los Angeles. I must stop in Northridge before I drop you off. At Happy Valley Lane, no less. I have to deliver my son back to his mother. He should have been home two hours ago. I am remiss, you see. I have had him for two weeks. Two whole weeks out of the entire year. For a while, please, will you? We don't know these things. Oh! Oh, is that you? Yes, we are home, Denise. You're late for. Yes, I know. Uh, we had the uh, car trouble. I know, but I expected you home two hours ago. Is Chris all right? Of course he's all right. He had a wonderful time. You should have called me. I've been worried sick about him. Denise, nothing happened. There was no need to call. But you know how I worry. You only do it to hurt me. Oh, please, now. I expected him here two hours ago. Two hours out of an entire year. Can they mean so much more to you than to me? It won't happen again, Paul. I'll see to that. He's sleeping. Don't wake him. Give me my son. I hate to wake him. It's been an awful long time. Get him to me! Darling. Yes. Yes, darling. Yes. 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 Mommy! Oh, darling, you're home now. I told you he was asleep. You will not upset him. I'll upset him. What have the two of you done to him? Oh, no, you're wrong. It, it wasn't like that. Don't tell me about him. I know him. I used to be married to him. Oh, stop it. I picked up Miss Smith on the highway. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Now, wait a minute. I had enough of that nonsense when we were married. Now I want you to apologize to her. Apologize? To her? And don't bother to come back, Paul Colbert. We don't need you. I'll bring up my boy decently. This is the last time you'll get him away from me. No more, no more weekends. No more vacations. Where do you live? On Fuller, between Sunset and Santa Monica. Right. Thank you very much for everything. Including the welcome at uh, Happy Valley Lane? I shouldn't have let you in for that. I'm sorry. I understand. I wish I did. But we all have our own special problems, don't we, Miss Smith? I... I don't want to keep you, Mr. Colbert. Good night. Oh, I am in no hurry, if, if you feel like talking about it. No, I think I'd better go in. You have, uh, you have no way to get in? Oh, I, I keep a key outside my door. Oh, I see. Are you going to call again? Call? Well, that call you made on the highway it seemed very urgent then. Oh, yes. Yes, I will. You sure there is nothing else I can do? No. Thank you. Uh, uh, Miss Smith? Forgive me, but I... Uh... I can appreciate not wanting to open up to a stranger, but sometimes uh, when we are in trouble... I'm all right, really. Now that I'm home, it's hard to believe it ever really happened. Mm. You live alone? Yes. No family? No family. No family or half a family, it's bad either way, isn't it? I... I liked your son very much, Mr. Colbert.
Sharon. Oh, Keith. Oh, Keith. I forgot all about you. Everybody forgets, Keith. I thought I heard someone. You been here long? No, I just got in. Who are you calling? Milo Seymour. Something the matter? You'd like to tell me about it, huh? <laughs> Miss Carlin, you should have married me. <laughs> We're better off as friends, Mr. Burgess. I'll settle for a secretary. Why don't you quit the Seymours? Come back to an employee with a high IQ, huh? I'm sorry, Keith, but we tried it once, remember? It didn't work. Now, why are you calling your boss at this ungodly hour? Because I have something to tell him. Is you want to tell me? No, I can't. Oh. Okay, I'll go. Oh, Keith, don't be stubborn. Now, you haven't any money, and you haven't any place to stay. Now, wait. Sit down. Hello? Uh, hello, Miss Smith? What? Uh, this is Paul Colbert. How did you get my number? Well, it seems to be listed under the name of uh, Carlin. You checked the mailbox in the lobby. Hmm. I am nosy, uh, like a cop. Uh, only one single was listed. Uh, I found nothing under the name of uh, Carol Smith, so I took a chance on uh, Sharon Carlin. Mr. Colbert, I'm not obliged to explain anything to you. Oh, I'm not saying you have to. Uh, listen, I found uh, a wonderful coffee house around the corner from you. Would you like to join me? Now? Uh, why not? I owe you an apology for Denise, and uh, you owe me 75 cents, remember? Oh, good change from the phone call. I forgot to give it back to you. Yes, and my creditors are breaking down the door. Can you hear them? Hmm? Where are you, at Tutu's? Uh, I don't know. Uh, hold on, will you? Uh, excuse me, uh, where am I here? At Tutu's. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, it is Tutu's. I'll be right there. I'm going out, Keith, just for a little while. Now, will you wait for me and make yourself some coffee? Not much else I can do, is it? We'll talk when I get back. Sure. Just like old times. Hey. Your face is dirty. French cars, isn't it? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I guess divorce has made me lose my sense of humor. My parents were divorced. It's two years for me now. I miss my son. I, well, frankly, I, I worry about him. Uh, his mother is not right for him. But anyway, that's not your worry. Thank you. Did you make your call? Yes, but no one answered. That's strange, because the Wilsons, the couple who run the house, they're always home. Maybe the phone is out of order. <laughs> Just driving. Tell me about yourself. Uh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a secretary companion. I work for a Mr. Seymour. I'm his secretary, and I read to his wife and take her for drives. She's not in good health. 
I take you to the house money. Oh, well, she has from her first husband. Mr. Seymour dabbles in archaeology. I help him catalog his collection and write letters, things like that. How long have you been in this country? Mm, almost eight years. What do you do? I'm an insurance broker. Oh, don't worry, I will not try to sell you a policy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least there, how old are you? What does that mean? Oh, I was thinking about Denise. You know, once upon a time, a boy met a girl, and they lived unhappily ever after. What's wrong? What is it? What happened? Take me home, please. Upstairs. No. I don't want to trouble you. It's no trouble. Good night. Now, who is he? Now, look. Ever since I picked you up tonight, you have been giving me a song and dance. Now you say Keith is dead. Murdered. Well, who is he and who killed him? I don't know. I, I can't tell you. All right. Go and tell the police, then. I can't. I can't. Get out. Come on, get out. And forget you ever saw me. I'll do just the same for you. Oh, don't, please. Please help me. How can I help you if you keep on playing games? Are you going to tell me? the whole story now, eh? 
Yes. All right. We have to go to the police. We must notify them. Oh, I can't. I can't. Two murders in one night? What else do you expect? They won't believe me. Oh, Paul, you just don't understand. You just don't understand. You still haven't told me the whole story, have you? Have you? No, I haven't. All right. Either you tell me or we have to go to the police. I'll tell you. My mother and I were very close. She's dead now. I, I don't have anyone else. How about Keith Burgess? Oh, well, Keith was in love with me. But it didn't work out. Oh, it's so hard to talk about it. institution. I was in that sanitarium at Whitford for six months. Where the cop took you off the train? Yes. That's why I ran. I had to get away from Whitford and all it meant to me. But uh, you said you were all alone. Someone had to commit you. An aunt. My mother's sister. I don't see Aunt Helen anymore, and I don't think of her as family. I really am all alone now. How long ago did you get out? Six months ago. I met Keith after I came to Los Angeles. He's a writer, and I was his secretary. But we weren't good for each other. I mean, you both can't be weak. So then I went to work for Milo Seymour. I know I should have told you this before, but if I blurted it all out the minute I ran into you, you'd have thought I had a... A, a persecution complex? <laughs> I guess you're right. So now you know all about me, the whole truth. Do you believe me now? I believe you, Sean. Try to get Seymour again? Oh, I've tried twice. What time is it? About uh, four thirty. No, I think I'll go see him in the morning. Oh, it's time you were in bed. Come on. You'll find some pyjamas in the top drawer. Mm. With a big hem frame. You see, no matter what my ex-wife thinks, I uh, I don't keep any peekaboo nightgowns on hand. <laughs> I'll have to let her know. Yeah, do that. Then she'll meet us both in court. I'm a nuisance to you. You certainly are. Good night, Paul.
quite a house to see most have, huh? Hmm. Relax, you'll be all right. I can't help thinking about Keith. I keep seeing... Well, Sharon, my child. Oh, Mr. Seymour, good morning. And you must be the young man who phoned me at breakfast. Excuse me, I'm Paul Colbert. How do you do? How are you? Won't you come in? Thank you. The Wilsons aren't here, by the way. I gave them the weekend off. The Wilsons are my housekeeping couple, Mr. Colbert. Oh, Miss Carlin told me, yes. Well, Sharon, why on earth didn't you come back and work after dinner last night? Oh, but Mr. Seymour... Well, I was quite disappointed when you failed to show up. I'd ask her to help with some research, Mr. Colbert. She said she'd be happy to do it. Yes, I know, but when you changed her plans, I... Sharon, I changed nothing. But, Mr. Seymour, you were the one who sent me to San Francisco. I did what? You asked me to make that trip for you. You, you know you did. No, my dear, I didn't ask you to go anywhere. But uh, the envelope, the train tickets, Kreska gave them to me. Kreska? Steve Kreska? Yes. Well, isn't he your chauffeur? Yes. Well, he drove Sharon to Union Station. I certainly know nothing about it. Well, he did, Mr. Seymour, he did. Sharon, to the best of my knowledge, Kreska never left the house yesterday. But he came to my apartment for me. He drove me to the station. Uh, could we talk to him, please? Well, I'm afraid he isn't here. Oh, he'll be back. He's just gone out to pick up a prescription for me. I think we can clarify matters in the library. I believe we can do it with Mr. Brady's help. May I present Joseph Brady, who's just arrived from Whitford? I didn't do it. I told you I didn't. Do what? Oh, Paul, he's the man who took me off the train at Whitford. What train? Well, what is this? Oh, you know what I mean. Sorry, Mr. Brady, it's quite beyond me. Oh, Paul, he's the one, he's the one I told you about. Well, Mr. Brady? Look, mister, I never met her, I never saw her before. You're lying. You took me off the train, I ran away from you. They lie. What are they trying to do? If you never saw her, how come you're here? Well, I can explain that, Mr. Colbert. Three days ago, I received a phone call from Whitford, from Dr. Clinton Hartley. Dr. Hartley runs the Whitford Sanitarium. It's a private hospital for mental patients. Yes, I know. So he told you that Sharon had been one of his patients. So? Well, now, she certainly told you much more than she ever told me. The doctor said she'd left the hospital without permission. He'd only just traced her to my home. He advised me to take precautionary measures. Frankly, I ridiculed the idea. And that was three days ago? Yes. Last night, when Sharon failed to keep her appointment, I wasn't really worried. But then when you called me this morning, your reference to a manila envelope troubled me. So I opened my safe. Yesterday morning, this box contained approximately $3,000. But now... Are you accusing Sharon of taking that money? She knows the combination. Don't you, my child? Yes. But I don't know anything about any money. Kreska gave me that envelope. I'm afraid this is precisely what Dr. Hartley warned me against. I told you the truth. I didn't steal any money. We still don't know why Mr. Brady is here. Well, right after you called, I phoned Whitford. Dr. Hartley told me he'd been in touch with Sharon's family. Your Aunt Helen, my dear, she wishes your therapy continued. That explains Mr. Brady's presence among us. You got here quite fast, didn't you? Sure, I flew in. You'll feel much safer back in the hospital, my dear. Mr. Brady will escort you home. No! It wasn't a home! It was a prison, a jail! I hated it! Is that 
that's why you escaped. I didn't escape. I didn't break any law. And I didn't steal your money. Mr. Colbert, I appeal to you. If you have any influence with her at all. Your wife can prove it. Mr. Seymour knows all about it. But, but you never mentioned that before. Oh, yes. Mr. Seymour asked me to buy her a kimono in Chinatown. She gave me the address of the shop. You mean my wife actually asked you to... Yes. Kreska gave me her note. May I see it, please? I... I don't have it. It was in my purse. I lost it when I ran away from you. Now look, lady, for the last time, I never saw you before. Oh, he's lying! Oh, Paul, you must believe me. Paul? Mr. Seymour, uh, there is a lot at stake here. Frankly, a lot that uh, I don't understand. I would like to talk to your wife. Uh, please. Now look here, Colbert. I'm certainly not going to subject my wife to this unpleasantness. Do you think it is pleasant for Miss Callan? Well, I grant you that. But my wife is not in good health, as Sharon can tell you. The fact is, we'd agreed a change of scene might be good for her. Until this matter came up, we intended to drive up to our mountain lodge today. I'd still like to talk to her. Very well, Mr. Colbert. If you'll excuse me. I thought you told me everything. He did take me off that train. He knows he did. Why didn't you tell me you ran away from the sanitarium? I didn't run away. I left two days early. Oh, you don't know what it's like to wait and wait to be free. Is there anything else you haven't told me? I didn't do anything criminal. I talked to Dr. Hartley several times after I left. I phoned him when I worked with Keith. Well, Sharon, you should have told me. Oh, you don't understand. When you had a breakdown and everything collapses all around you. It's all right, it's all right, darling. But you don't have to explain. <laughs> Sit down. I didn't want to bother you, dearest, but it's only for a moment. The gentleman, my wife. Romel, dear, this is Mr. Brady from Whitford, and Mr. Colbert, who is Sharon's friend. You're not Mrs. Seymour. Paul, she isn't Mrs. Seymour. Sharon, dear, if I'm not Mrs. Seymour, then who am I? The woman, the woman from the train. The train? Yes, she's the one who was killed. Well, Sharon, my child, what are you saying? Murdered, Mr. Seymour! Oh, you poor child. Don't talk to me, I won't listen! Wait. Wait, I can, I can prove it. Look, I'll show you. Wait. It's gone. This is a picture of the Mountain Lodge. What is it? Mrs. Seymour's picture, then. This isn't it. It's gone. Where is it? What have you done with it? Sharon, you know I never keep pictures of myself around the house. I abhor that kind of vanity. They are lying. Mrs. Seymour's picture is always on the desk. Always! Mr. Colbert, do you still wish to question my wife? 
Yes, I do. Uh, Mrs. Seymour, you asked Miss Carlin to buy you a kimono in San Francisco. A kimono? Yes. Milo, really? What does all this mean, Milo? Now, don't upset yourself, Romel. I'll tell you all about it later. Mr. Colbert, are you satisfied now? Frankly, no. And why not? I would like proof that uh, this lady is uh, really your wife. Milo. Oh, I know it is an imposition, but I've got to know the truth. Well, the Wilsons are gone for the weekend, as I told you, and I'm certainly not going to involve my neighbors. That is your chauffeur. Kreska? That's right. Yes. Maybe Kreska's back. You can get the truth from him. Well? Mr. Colbert, I've tried to be patient, but this girl's fantastic story... It isn't a fantastic story. When she got home last night, she found a dead man in her apartment. Dead man? A friend. Murdered. Did you see this dead man, Mr. Colbert? Why do you ask? Well, I went to her place myself before I came here. Doc Hartley figured she might have hidden Mr. Seymour's money in her apartment. The place was empty. You're lying. Keith was there in the chair. The apartment was empty, Miss Carlin. There was no dead man. There was nothing touched, uh, no sign of any struggle. There's no money on the premises. But Mr. Colbert, if you know anything at all about paranoia, the classic pattern of persecution. We still haven't talked to your chauffeur. It must be quite plain by now. I know I am stubborn. I was brought up that way. Very well, Mr. Colbert. If you'll excuse me, dearest, while I go and get Kreska. Why go for him? And how do you know he's back? Mr. Colbert, I find your distrust of me very flattering. Oh, you're back, Kreska? Yes, sir. Just got in. Uh, I want to see you immediately. I'm in the library. Yes, sir. Well, young man, was I non-committal enough? Hello? Mr. Seymour? Yes? Dr. Hartley. Has Brady arrived yet? Oh, yes, doctor. He's here. Uh, just one moment, please. Mr. Colbert, this is Dr. Hartley. Now, I don't want any doubts left in your mind. Will you talk to him, please? Hello? Hello? Who is this? Sharon. Oh, is that you, Sharon? Dr. Hartley? Yes, Sharon. I've talked to your Aunt Helen. She has the authority to order you back here, you know. We think you'll be safer here, Sharon. Don't you agree? Sharon, you agree? You'll come back home with Mr. Brady? Yes. Yes, Dr. Hartley. Yes. You wanted to see me, Mr. Seymour? Uh, yes, Kreska. Uh, your prescription, sir. Thank you. Mr. Colbert, who told you to pick up Miss Carlin yesterday and drive her to Union Station? Union Station? Well, didn't you give her train tickets and a sealed envelope? Is this some kind of joke? It's no joke. What is this all about? Do you know Mrs. Seymour? Is something wrong? Thank you, Kreska. That's all we wanted to know. Now, are you satisfied? Yes, I am satisfied. Please, please, Paul, don't believe them. Everything I told you is true. You're all confused, Sharon. You're all mixed up. Maybe if you let the right people help you. I don't want their help. Or yours, either. You've turned against me, too. 
You're in the plot with them, aren't you? You are, aren't you? You've been in it from the first. You're all against me. You're all lying. It's all a and it's dirty. There is no plot, Sharon. I never saw any of these people before today. I certainly don't want to hurt you. They only want to help you. Are you ready to go now, my child? Don't touch me. I'll go with you. But don't touch me. I don't think there'll be any more trouble, Mr. Brady. All right. All right, Miss Carl. By the way, did Sharon tell you why she was committed to the sanitarium? No, she didn't. She killed a woman. A woman she was caring for. About my wife's age. Sharon, did you kill her? Yes. What will you do about the $3,000? Oh, I don't intend to prosecute. I'm sure we'll learn its whereabouts when the girl becomes more rational. It's a curious thing. Only an unbalanced mind continues to cling to errors of belief in the face of all contradictions. Well, I, I won't keep you. I guess you want to be going. Oh, I'm not sure I want to go away now. Well, nonsense, Romel. You need that holiday more than ever now. We're going up to the mountains as planned. Oh, really, Mr. Colbert? Husbands can be such martinets. Or are you married? No, no. Not anymore. Bye. Inside. Short trip. Yeah. Welcome back, my dear. I believe you've met all present. Kreska, get the car out of sight. Lock the front gates and keep watch outside. Bring her in. I don't like this, Milo. We're in a jam. You're nervous, Brady. You bet I'm nervous. I've been in the middle of this all my life. I've seen too many smart alibis smashed to feel good about this. Then you are a policeman. Well, yes and no, my dear. Brady retired from the Whitford Police Force on Monday. He said he was here for Dr. Hartley. Oh, yes. He's already gone to work for Dr. Hartley. No need to doubt the good doctor's integrity. When he first called, he had just received an anonymous note as to your whereabouts. You sent it to him? Yes. Yeah.
What are we going to do with her, Milo? Everything's gone wrong. Look, Irene and I did our job, Milo. It was Brady who lost it out of the way. You shouldn't have let her get away from you. Why do you think she made that break? Don't find on. Shut up! Now understand me. Once and for all, we're playing for high stakes. And I don't propose to lose them because of stupidity. That means no recrimination, no childish bickering, and no more blunders. Is that clear? You've killed your wife, haven't you? Have I indeed? You killed her, and you plan to blame me for her murder. Why? Why did you kill her? Well, what are the classic motivations for the elimination of one's spouse? Jealousy? Revenge? Financial gain? Her insurance? No, my wife, poor soul, never believed in insurance, but her estate, every penny of it, belongs to me now. And you know how much it is worth? Five million dollars. And now you're going to kill me? Of course. Relax, no one is here. I always stage my orgies on alternate weekends, you see. I tried calling you, Paul, but there was no answer. So I thought I'd drop by. Oh. Well, you were worried about me? Yes, I was. When did you start to drink in the daytime? Oh, it's a new habit. Is it because of that girl? Which girl? Oh, yes, yes, you mean my partner in sin, huh? Paul, don't. I was wrong last night. I came to apologize to you. At breakfast, Chris told me what happened. I feel so guilty. If, if there's anything I can do to help her, you know I will, Paul. I... Well, forget it, Denise. No one can help her now. You hate me, don't you? Denise, uh, the way we feel about each other has nothing to do with Sharon. Paul, I don't know what gets into me. I, I, sometimes I just lose control. I, I, I try to be like other people, but, but something inside of me. I, I don't want to hurt anybody. Well, it's done with now, anyway. Like they say, we will uh, all live happily ever after. Huh? Paul, I... I can see why you divorced me. It was the other way around, remember? All I care about is Chris's happiness. If you think he'd be better off with you instead of me, I... Well, uh, we'll try to work something out, huh? I know we can't get back together again. But I, I don't want to ruin his life. I, I don't want to destroy him. A child's supposed to need his mother, but... You should see his face. Every time you take him away on a camping trip, his whole face lights up. What's that? Uh, I'll call you. Where are you going, Paul? I want to satisfy my curiosity. Goodbye. Thank you for coming.
only an unbalanced mind continues to cling to errors of belief in the face of all contradiction. I didn't do it. Keith was already dead. I found him sitting in a chair. been formally introduced, have you? My sister, Irene Maddox, her husband, Duke. Kreska, you've already met. Where did Brady go? Back to Whitford. He'll say that you escaped. Originally, we planned to have him arrest you for disorderly conduct. I believe you can imagine the rest. You meant me to die in that jail cell, didn't you? As Brady would have seen to that. Suicide, of course. Because I killed Mrs. Seymour? Ingenious, don't you think? And, and the envelope. The money was in that, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Brady was instructed to put the cash in your purse. It was your motivation for killing poor Romel. Very ingenious, Mr. Seymour. But you didn't have to kill Keith your drunken friend. He never hurt you. He never harmed anybody. He got in the way. Slow down, Steve. You want us to go off the road? I thought you wanted to get to the cabin fast. Yes, but quite intact. Now slow down. I don't want anything else to go wrong. Everything's gone wrong from the beginning, hasn't it, Mr. Seymour? And everything's bound to go wrong. And you know why? Do tell me. Because your scheme is insane. You talked so glibly to Paul about my sickness, my paranoia. But look what you've tried to do. Look at your own crazy plan. That will do. Your vanity, your sickness, your delusions of grandeur. That will do. Your own crazy scheme. That's really paranoid. Oh!
Now what's wrong? Not my fault, Milo. Vepilock, maybe. But it's your job to see that these things don't happen. But Milo, it could happen to anyone. We'll do something. Get it going. Oh, I don't like the way our luck is running, Milo. Well, don't start worrying about it until you have to. We'll get back to town in time. If Steve starts this thing... She's got to start it. I won't tolerate any more delays. Don't look too good, Milo. Could be a clogged gas line, maybe worse. Aren't you sure? Well, I have to take it apart first. It might take an hour, maybe more. Oh, we can't stay here. We can't risk being seen out in the open. But, Milo, there's no place else. Elliot! Now listen to me, all of you. And the girl made me lose my temper. Now Steve. We can't afford that. Don't make it happen again. Sure, Milo, I get it. Now get this thing out of sight. Okay, but we'll all have to push. Get her inside. Steve, open up the back of the car and get the body out. Help him, Duke. She's too heavy for him alone. Let's get this thing over with, Milo. We're two hours late already. You'll do us all a service, Irene, if you stop whining. Now go upstairs and get her bedroom ready. What's there to do? Her bed must seem slept in, don't you understand? Your sister's very nervous, and so was Brady. A failing of lesser souls. They'll fail you, Mr. Seymour. Well, never underestimate five million dollars, Sharon. With their share, my sister and her husband will find added strength, and so will Brady and Kreska. You're forgetting Paul Colbert. A <laughs> good Samaritan. Yes. When he finds out that your wife is dead, and I'm dead, He's going to start asking questions. Oh, undoubtedly, but he'll be satisfied with the answers. After all, you did admit killing your former employer. That was self-defense. <laughs> the coroner's jury had its doubts. She was suicidal. Her family tried to keep it from me. That night she got a hold of some scissors. I tried to stop her and she turned on me. It happened while we were struggling. Well, I believe you, my dear, but who else really accepts it? I do. Paul! How'd you get up here? I borrowed the broomstick. Oh, Paul, Paul! Get away from me! I warn you, Colbert, when Duke and Kreska get in here... They are both indisposed. But not like your wife. They were pulling her out of the back of the car. How did you find us? I went through your desk. I found out how to get here, and also I found this. What delayed you? Their car broke down. It held them up for over two hours. Good. I was beginning to think they had all the luck. We still have it. Throw your gun down. He said, throw it down. Well, Irene, you redeemed yourself. Go outside and see what's happened to Kreska and Duke. Hurry! I must confess I was somewhat worried about you, Mr. Colbert, but not now. They have already called the police. Oh, they'll find no trace of you, just Sharon and my wife. Murder and suicide, huh? And precisely. Perfect, you see, foolproof. If everything is so perfect, what do you think I am doing here? 
Your foolproof scheme has more holes in it than a fake accident claim. There'll be no more mistakes. I'll see to that. Oh, you've made nothing but mistakes. Blunder after blunder. You're just another cheap crook. Greedy and stupid. Sir! I told you your scheme is insane. And I'll do. Now I warn you both. My you think... They're hurt. Jürgen and Kraska. I can't bring them to. They're badly hurt. Yes, that was just my intention. I've got to get Duke to a doctor. No, no, no. no, no, no. I'll, I'll see to him later. Why, oh, he's hurt. Steve, too. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Let me think. Yes, think and think fast. The cops will be all over you. They'll talk to your neighbors. They'll dig back into your past. They'll find nothing. Nothing. There isn't anything they can use against me. I made sure of that. Nothing, huh? And what do you think I have told the police? Everything. They know everything. I can handle them. I can explain everything to their satisfaction. You're forgetting Dr. Hartley. He'll never believe that I escaped a second time. That's right. He goes straight to the police. The truth will come out, bit by bit. That won't happen. It doesn't have to happen. Hartley will never testify. You mean you'll kill him too? Yes. I'll tell anyone who can tell him anything. Yes, I'll kill Hartley. Kill you. Kill everyone. Everyone. I haven't lost. I haven't lost. Stay where you are. Milo! What's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? Oh, you did this to him. You did it to him. No, he did it to himself.